Well, good morning, my lovers. Well, it's a warm uh, September morning. It's six o'clock and 20 degrees, just shy of 20 degrees. So, yeah, a bit warm for September, but there we go. Gotta make hay, as they say. So, anyway, today uh, I'm gonna do a new, improved, uh, proper jobbish. So, uh, a little while ago, I was contacted by uh, a chap um, from Facebook called Danny Ennis and said, have you ever seen a proper job brew day sheet from St. Austell? So he sent it over to me. And um, well, the first thing I spotted was that it's not all Maris Otter. There's 10% Cornish gold in there. Now Cornish Gold, I've been through all the, the suppliers and can't find it anywhere, but um, I believe it was Getter Brewed. When I typed in the search field for Cornish Gold, it the result came up saying that Light Munich is a good substitute for Cornish Gold. So I've bought some Light Munich and that's what we're going to do today. Um, 90% Maris Otter, 10% Light Munich. The other thing, uh, the hops, the hop schedule, pretty much bang on, um, but they, instead of doing uh, 75, 80 degree Whirlpool edition uh, at the end, they do hop back. So hop back is where the hop wort goes through the hop back which is full of hops and uh, that's on its way to be cooled on its way to the fermenter so it's actually going through at um, 100 degrees basically isn't it, I suppose so Dan, now Danny's a bit posh and, and he's actually bought a hop rocket um, and he's fitted that up on his system um, I'm not going to do that so I'm just going to do a flame out edition and uh, and I think me and Danny are going to compare and see what uh, what difference it makes so I'm just going to like turn the heat off chuck in the last edition of hops and leave it there for 15-20 minutes so uh, the other thing as well is they over pitch their yeast uh, because they pitch at 15 degrees and they leave it at 15 degrees for a couple of days before raising the temperature to 19 degrees, 20 degrees, whatever you like, um, and then finish off the fermentation. And I understand the reason for that is to uh, prevent esters, basically. So so uh, uh, so that's what we're going to do today and uh, this will have to be a grain of glass and we'll see what um, what um, what it turns out like so let me quickly go through the recipe if you've never seen the other proper jobbish videos I've done so like I said 90% Maris Otter uh, if you want to use Golden Promise, feel free, but uh, Maris Otter is what they use. And oh, it was Getter Brewed, it says here. Uh, so 10% Getter uh, Light Munich. And then in the 60 minute boil, Willamette to 17 IBUs, Chinook to 26 IBUs. In the last 15 minutes, Willamette to 14 IBUs and Chinook to 17 IBUs and then flame out or hot back uh, right so I've got no IBUs on here so it'll be four this is a, a 20 litre batch 44 grams of Willamette uh, at 5.7 alpha acid 38.1 grams of Cascade at uh, 6.7 alpha acid and 31.4 grams of Chinook at 11.5 alpha acids. 
So I've gone for an English IPA water profile and done the usual. Got four um, bottles of proper job, chilled them down, drank them all bar the dregs at the bottom and made the yeast starter uh, from those and I made a huge one so um, I started off with the four bottles it put it into 500 mil of wort put it in another put in another 500 mil of wort and then put a thousand mil of wort on top of that again uh, chilled that down poured off the spent wort put another 1500 mil of work on top of that so I've got a ton of yeast and um, and that's waiting in the fridge ready to go so I'm just gonna pitch that straight from the jam jar so uh, I'm doing right half a degree left to go and uh, I'm gonna get mashing in all right bit of uh, brew day footage and um, We'll do a grain of glass taste test at the end. Okay, catch you a bit later, my lovers. Well, this is the yeast I've collected and <laughs> it's only been out of the uh, fridge for about five five minutes no more than ten and it's, it's certainly lively I was going to pour that spent work off I'm not going to be able to now right then well that's the you know it's just cleaning up to do now so um, it all went pretty well really um, Beat the numbers, uh, so pre-boil gravity I was aiming for 1031, I got 1034, uh, final gravity, uh, well no, original gravity 
uh, aiming for 1040 got 1047 so that's going to end up as a when I find it where's bloody ABV on here oh there it is there oh shit a 5% beer when I was aiming for a 4.2% beer let's see if we get the attenuation in the east now the only problem that arises when you uh, beat your um, your figures uh, so you you get a better mash efficiency than expected is that it affects your IBUs so uh, so on Brewfather you can look at the um, recipe statistics and your actual batch statistics so um, so I was aiming for 72 mash mash 72 percent mash efficiency and I got 80 percent uh, so that means that obviously I've got more sugar out of the the uh, the grain than uh, expected. So my IBUs, target IBUs, was 73, and is now um, my actuals are now 70. So and the BUGU ratio is what was was aiming for 1.83. I've now achieved 1.49 so so that's sort of like a problem with getting greater mash efficiency than you're expected but uh, with the Brewfather app uh, you can there's a button there just there I think is that one where you can input those figures and adjust the recipe so the next time you do it that's your figures that you're aiming for so um, so cover the IBUs because I, I did realize when I said about the uh, hops at the beginning I didn't tell you the target IBUs so that's that so um, I managed to cool it down to 18 degrees through the plate heat exchanger uh, so I've just put it in the um, fermentation fridge which is set at 15 and I'll pitch the yeast tomorrow night and uh, and then hopefully away it'll go so uh, and I'll leave it there for a couple of days and then I'll, I'll bump it up to 19 and then uh, um, yeah, hopefully uh, we'll get uh, a, a clone that's a bit more like the uh, the real McCoy so uh, anyway uh, next thing you see it'll be pouring a pint ah see you there Okay, so let's taste it. Let's see what it's like. So, uh, just a couple of little things uh, that uh, I didn't mention on the uh, brew day footage was that I only got 17 litres, I think it was, out of the um, batch. Um, I think that was the first time I'd done a single keg using the new 5.5 kilowatt element. So. Uh, so I did add two litres of cold water to it. So if you remember that uh, OG was 10.47, two litres of water brought it down to 10.42. So it still come out at 4.7 beer. Um, uh, but it has affected the IBUs. So I know on the brew day, uh, the IBUs had changed to 70. Um, now it's 65. I, I'm, I'm assuming that that's down to adding the two litres of water. Yeah. Uh, so it had two days at 15C and then I put up to 19 and it, <clears throat> um, it had just over a week at 19, maybe a little bit longer. Because uh, in the meantime I did another brew, put that in. So, and then that stayed at, at fermenting temperature until I dropped it down to 14 degrees to dry hop the rude gesture. So, um, uh, anyway, it's all kegged up. Tried it last night. So, here we go. Here we go. So, here we are. So, this is the 
This is the, the one that I made actually 96 days ago or went in the keg 96 days ago. So it's looking pretty clear. Um, I don't know if you can tell from there, but I think they're pretty much the same colour. And so, pretty much smell the same, which is a bit fruity. Should be all those bloody hops. So, I mean, it's a great flavoured beer, citrusy, fruity, not overpowering on the um, on the bitterness, on the IBUs and all that. Just starting to get a bit of bitterness now. And at 96 days old, it's still a very drinkable beer. Now then, so this has been in the keg for... Um, a week um, I had four pints of it yesterday uh, so let's have a taste of it today much much more bitterness um, more more forward bitterness than back-end bitterness on this one and Now I had a mate down last night and we were drinking this and I was halfway through my pint and I'll turn to him and I goes, can you get green apples? And he went, oh yeah, a little bit. And green apples, as you may know, is acetaldehyde, which is caused by uh, stress in the yeast. And although I'm happy that I pitched enough yeast uh, it was at 15C. Now I'd had this problem before using this yeast on, on, on a proper job uh, where the heater packed up in the fermentation fridge and uh, and the green apple flavour was, was sort of quite pronounced and I think I binned that one if I remember correctly. Last night I could say that there was a hint of green apple by the time I was in my second pint I couldn't detect it and I don't I don't think I'm detecting it now to be honest no I'm not I'm not picking it up so uh, there we are I'm, I'm, who knows? Well, I don't know. No, I'm getting a nice bit of bitterness out of that. I'm not getting the green apples now, which is which is a result. That's good because I sent two bottles of that and one bottle of the uh, ninety-six day year old one, well, ninety-six day year old, ninety-six day old. Um, we're off to um, Danny Ennis today, so hopefully you'll receive them by Tuesday next week. Um, I really like that actually. I, I like I like a bit of quite a bit of beer, so that's sixty five IBUs. I, I'm really liking that actually. I'll do that again. Um, need to sort out the mash efficiency. I need to <coughs> um, not get. Uh, a higher mash efficiency than I'm aiming for because it upsets the balance of the IBUs and I will not start the fermentation off at 15 degrees again it will start at 19 degrees I think this yeast doesn't like being under pitched it doesn't like the colder temperature that that's that's my experience um, so I will in future over pitch it at 19 degrees or 20 degrees probably 19 but it, I will over pitch it so um, 
I'm really pleased with that actually I think the changes oh the other thing actually I'm not picking up so we put the 10% um, like Munich in didn't we this is the other one this is 100% Maris Otter There's certainly a difference in mouthfeel. I don't think that's down to it. I'm not, I'm not really. I, I'm not picking up any difference with the. Mm, um, maybe the hundred percent Maris Otter is a little bit sweeter. Yeah, but I'm I'm definitely going to stick with the ten percent like Munich. I think that's cracking. Get those IBUs at the seventy three at least, and uh, I'll be well happy. So anyway, um, cheers to Danny Ennis for the information and uh, it's been great. We've been talking on uh, Messenger and, and uh, talking about this, this particular brew and uh, doing the proper job-ish. And uh, I know he's, he's brewing some and he's going to send down uh, some to me to have a go at. So um, I do believe Danny is, is gone a bit commercial uh, so you can check Danny out at on on Instagram at small underscore batch underscore brewing underscore co all right so you check out what he's up to there and um, I think that's about it for me but Danny I really appreciate the information you gave me on this I think it has improved the beer so cheers take care everyone Cheers, my dear!